We can talk about guards, guns, mental health, funding, but one Metro student's mission is to break past the red tape quickly and make classrooms safer in a simple and cost effective way. Her Girl Scout project is intentionally practical, not political. 17 year old Sarah Mishanuk is spending her winter break doing homework, but not the kind you might think. Just to add an extra part of friction from the ground to the door. This isn't a project for 12th grade physics. It's a real world experiment with a profound goal. In theory, it gives you more time to possibly get out of the room and find an exit or to defend yourself. Sarah is testing barricades that would be used to bar a door in case of an active shooter. We, at least in, at the high school level, we should be partaking in protecting the classroom. It's an issue fraught with political friction, but she's locked in on finding solutions to an indisputable reality. The end goal is being able to protect others. The lifelong Millard student has vague memories of the shooting in her district when she was in first grade. She's never known a world without school shootings and active shooter drills. Always turn off the lights, hide in the corner, cross the room from the door, make sure you're out of sight from any windows, and barricade the door. But she's seen no textbook describing how to do that. For me, it was a matter of how are we supposed to protect ourselves if we don't know how to do it. Studying solutions is now this student's Girl Scout Gold Award, the group's highest rank. She admits the project started to earn one more pin on her vest and another accolade for applications. It's not just about that anymore. It's about slowly making a change. But she knows students alone can't enact that change. The Nebraska Department of Education's School Safety Task Force is also brainstorming solutions. Be proactive to help prevent um, and also then be prepared if something happens. Jenny Benson is president of the Nebraska State Education Association and is on the task force. She doesn't want the burden of protecting a classroom to fall only on teachers or students. I think that the responsibility lies with all of us, so with the community. And While improving physical safety is one priority, she's also pushing for more mental health resources in urban and rural schools. How are we, you know, being proactive in mental health services in the resources? But for Sarah, making each classroom feel a little safer is one way she can contribute. We fear that it might be our last day. And it's really just about being able to protect ourselves and come home. And students, she realizes, might know things out of necessity the rest of us don't three textbooks is bulletproof, and that's one way to protect our classrooms, but it's not the only way. Sarah's raised $700 and spent that on six different barricade products, which she puts to the test in her garage. They cost $23 to $130 each and account for inconsistencies in infrastructure, like which way a classroom door opens. And I can't create a solution, but I can create, can stop the problem from getting further and that's what I'm trying to do. She's learned being able to literally stop a door from opening could cost $23, giving students priceless time to get out or defend themselves. Sometimes the $23 option is good enough and good enough can save a lot of lives. The issue that defines a generation with that student taking matters into her own hands with high stakes and high hopes for change. You can find the results from the Securing Our Schools questionnaire sent to every public school district on the KETV mobile app. You'll also find resources on how to talk to your child about school violence and trauma. And remember, if you see something or know of a possible threat, say something. You can always remain anonymous. If you missed any part of this show or want to watch it again, it's available on the very local app. I'm Joey Safchik. Thanks for watching. We'll see you back here next Sunday morning for KETV Newswatch 7's Chronicle.